All right, so I'm here at Plumber's Landing, which is like Ribbon Candy, Goat Hill, and Uxbridge, Mass. Um, not a new trail for me. It's been a long time since I've ridden here, so today might feel like a new trail. Um, I'm just gonna take the new bike out for a rip and uh, see how she goes. Let's do it. So Goat Hill has two main parking lots, the north parking lot at Plumber's Landing and the south parking lot at Hartford Avenue. We prefer the Plumber's Landing lot just because it allows you to start with Ribbon Candy, which is a flowy, fun, twisty trail that lets you get the legs warmed up before you make it over to Goat Hill. Shoulder. Oh no, Tom. What? No leak. I don't know if it's there you go, tubeless. At Goat Hill, we started with a portion of Reload, which is a direct route to the main peak. This trail is a good way to get familiar with the type of terrain you'll experience at this trail network. Killed off reload to hit up Wind Up, which is about a two mile trail that consists of fun intermediate level downhill sections, steady climbs that aren't too taxing, and some technical features you don't have to think too hard about. Just go and have fun. Wind up takes you to the top of Goat Hill, and despite gaining 400 feet of elevation on essentially a climbing trail, you also get 275 feet of descending, so it is way more enjoyable than it looks on paper. Oh, yeah. That's a drop at the end. Yeah. Fun stuff like that. Keep you on your toes. Play around. Did you hit those? Damn, that's tight. That's super fun. At the top, you are rewarded with Billy Goat, which is one of two back-to-back -back descending trails that lead you to the southern side of Goat Hill. 
This two mile long trail gives you plenty of fun, flowy single track with a variety of terrain consisting of tight turns, berms, and in some small rock features. And even with some short climbs sprinkled in, overall you're losing elevation more than you're gaining, which makes Billy Goat super enjoyable and easy for all types of riders. Kind of Down and out. Yeah. And once you catch your breath, you can finish off the south side of Goat Hill with Down and Out, which is one of the more technical downhill trails there that really lets you test your descending skills. Rocky. Oh, that's super fun in there. At the end, you were let out to the Hartford Ave parking lot and ready to go back up. Yes! Holy! That last action was so good! That was pretty good. That was awesome. So down and out was super sick. A lot of fun. Rowdy, rocky, some awesome things. But my downside getting out is I did a little bit of a hike up a double track here. Not much actual hiking, just a little bit. And then a little fire road washout trail to climb out. All right, take that back. That wasn't too bad getting out of down and up. All right, so we're gonna take reload back up to the top. This way you could do some more laps on Billy Goat if you want to. Ooh, uh, that turn. Using the south climb, we made it back to the peak of Goat Hill where Wind Up ends. From there, we hopped on the Greenway Trail briefly but split off onto Bone Spur, which is a small offshoot loop that connects back with Greenway Trail. Just like the rest of Goat Hill, you're treated to a buffet of twisty turns, flowy sections, and some fun features to play around on.
once connected back to the Greenway Trail, you are headed north on your way home toward Ribbon Candy. On a two mile stretch with the same type of terrain as wind up, only this time you're heading downhill for most of this trail, which after about 11 miles or so is a great way to end a ride. It's like fall, all the leaves are out. that again. On the way back out you can either take ribbon candy in reverse or you can take the canal trails out these are just nice little flat ones to just coast and cruise you could do a ribbon candy but i think a lot of those trails are better on the way out and the way back in all right so that's it for our little tour of goat hill a little bit of uh, ribbon candy thrown in at the beginning i had not been to goat hill in a few years and i kicking myself down for not going back sooner. That might be my new favorite place to go that's local to my house. I love Vietnam, like it's super close and a lot of fun, but like you don't have like long downhills like you have at Goat Hill. Um, Goat Hill is more natural. There's very little man-made stuff there. Um, so if you're looking for that sort of riding experience um, and you like Vietnam, I think you would love Goat Hill. Um, not as many like punchy short climbs that really like kill you over the length of the ride. It's a solid loop. Like I feel pretty good after it. We did, you know, 12 plus miles over, you know, 1200 feet of climbing, I think. Um, and I still feel really good, especially on a new bike that has a little more travel and maybe not as efficient at climbing as my regular trail bike. And I think most people could ride there. Um, it is a little rocky, a little rooty for beginners, but if you take it slow, it's not terrible. Um, there's no features there that are at the level of Vietnam as far as difficulty goes. And I know I'm comparing this a lot to Vietnam. Um, I know a lot of people love Vietnam and for good reason. Uh, one thing I like about Goat Hill better than Vietnam is that it's very, very easy to navigate. So if you haven't been and you wanna go check it out, like you should have no issue using trail forks to get around um, that entire trail network. 
Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have been to Goat Hill, what's your favorite trail you guys like riding there? And if you haven't, are you guys gonna go? So yeah, we'll see you out there. Oh, unclipped. Fuck. Still going, still going.